Good Sunday morning and welcome to Inside Tennessee along with my colleague John North. I'm John Becker. We're glad you're with us this morning to hear from someone who says, you know what? I've had enough of elected office for the moment. Eddie Manis joins us. Our conversation with Representative Manis of District 18 spent two years in the state legislature and said, uh, uh, thank you, uh, I'm done for now. Uh, Representative Manis, great to have you with us. We appreciate it. And let's just talk about your decision first and why you decided not to run again. Yeah, you know, John, when I was <clears throat> approached by some of the caucus members to consider running for the state legislature, I, you know, I was a little apprehensive because of being in a legislative role, being more of a CEO, I was, it was kind of a, I knew that'd be kind of an adjustment for me. So I reluctantly agreed and said, you know, I can, yeah, I, I'll do this. Uh, I can do anything for two years. And if it's just impossible, then, uh, you know, I can go back. And, and this was prior to COVID. And so uh, I did, I went through the election process and, and, then served for two years and uh that was you know two years of the uh, the campaign was during COVID, and that was a tough time and uh just trying to manage business and and the struggles with uh i, I guess being a legislator and and uh i just decided two years was enough for me from the legislative uh, branch of government. We want to dive into some of those specifics, and I'll tell our viewers now, if you haven't read uh, Representative Manis's post on his Facebook page, you, can, you get some details about your experience there. We're going to talk about some of that on this Sunday morning. John? Eddie, uh, you made a number of points. It was a well-written, well-thought-out, uh, thoughtful uh, piece that you wrote, and I'm just curious, a uh, number of things we could talk about, but one of the conclusions one might draw from that is that it's pretty tough today in Tennessee for a moderate Republican to sort of uh, get anywhere or have much success and feel like he's appreciated. I don't know if that's accurate or not, but I wanted to bounce that off you. Man, John, that is perfect. You took the words right out of my mouth, and I was thinking about that just before we started. It is tough. Uh, it was tough during the 112th General Assembly to be a moderate. I, I mean, it's you, you have to, to give a lot of thought to what you're how you're casting your votes what you're casting your votes for you know i said many times if if you're a, a just a far-right republican or really a strict republican you can just look at legislation if it's republican sponsored you just vote for it you, i think in some cases you don't even have to read it uh democrats the same way and so if you're a moderate i would uh i would have lobbyists come to my office and say you're you're studying your legislation why are you doing that and i'm like as a moderate, I feel like I have to because I have to be able to know what I'm voting for. I just don't vote straight Republican. I have to know what I'm voting for. And so it's more of a challenge to be a moderate. And I think it's going to be harder to be a moderate in the upcoming you know, session. You build yourself as a fiscal conservative. You built a small business into what Prestige Cleaners is today. Um, let's dive into that a little bit. What are your tenants as you say, a moderate Republican? What do you believe in that you think the party has strayed from? Well, when I think of a Republican, I think of maybe old time Republicans like, you know, Howard Baker, Lamar Alexander, uh, I would even love Bill Haslam, although he's not an old time Republican, but Bill Haslam, more moderate, uh, compassionate conservatives that believe in small government, less government overreach, uh, you know, liberties, freedom. Uh, they obviously Republicans believe in capitalism and and uh, support small business. And so those are the principles that I really continue to hold on to. Uh, uh, from being a more moderate, re compassionate conservative. I, I think the party has kind of strayed and got more into political political rhetoric, more social issues, just a lots of things that take up a lot of time during the General Assembly. And I think with that in mind, a lot of important issues that we face in our state tend to not be addressed. So that's the way I would define you know, my, I guess, Republican leanings. I know there are Republicans out there that are just as you described, because I talk to them pretty much every day here in Knox County as well as elsewhere, but they don't speak up so much. Why is that? Are, are we in a status where the party, party members such as that just feel like 
they're going to be attacked or they're going to be shouted down and so they just remain quiet or what's going on? Yeah, I think it, I think it depends on what district you represent. I, I think if you represent a more conservative district and you are you're worried about or concerned about re-election, you have to get there and, and, and be far right and you can't demonstrate that you're more moderate in your thinking. Trust me, I've talked to lots of people in the General Assembly that are in uh, the Republican Party and my party, and and they will say it within four walls, and then it's it might be a little different when they cast their vote. And I, I respect that. I respect that, you know, you're hopefully you're representing your constituents and uh, you're voting the way that they would like for you to vote or to the best of your knowledge. So I think it's it's just a little harder. You can kind of stay out of the fray if you just just vote Republican, don't make any waves, and just vote there all the time. There, there are fewer challenges, no doubt. And so I think that could be a reason why that a lot of people just just tend to to do that and are less moderate. We'll dive into a few more specifics of your time in office when we come back. A quick break here on Inside Tennessee. We're back with more from Representative Eddie Manis after the break. 